Welcome back to Monday Mod Tips. Today we're going to be covering the basics on voltmeters. Uh, it is uh, quite popular to add a voltmeter into an electric blaster. And it's a really good idea, especially if you're running a LiPo, because you don't want to drain a LiPo too far, uh, or it won't recharge anymore, and other bad things can happen. So um, I do highly recommend getting an actual um, LiPo alarm. They're ridiculously cheap, and they just plug into the LiPo. Uh, and you can have it in your battery housing, and it will make a very alarming noise when your voltmeter gets too low. But uh, for people who just like to be able to see what the voltage is um, on their blaster, whether they're running LiPo or not, you can easily add a simple voltmeter uh, to any electric blaster. And the way a voltmeter works is obviously quite simple. Red goes to positive, black goes to negative. And it lights up. This one's blue because I want it blue because the blaster is blue, and it's lovely. And um, this 9 volt battery is obviously a little bit low, but um, there, that's really all you it, it really needs. And uh, you don't have to worry about the voltage being, well I'm sure if you got the voltage up too high you would burn one of these out. Uh, but you're not likely to be using a volt meet, or a, a battery powerful enough to burn this out um, in a Nerf blaster. Um, in general. I think I have burned one up, but I think I actually had it wired in backwards, which is bad, so make sure you don't do that. The wiring is actually very simple, though it can be a little more complicated depending on how you want the voltmeter to turn on. Uh, one of the more popular ways is to have it uh, hooked to the jam door switch, so that when you open the jam door, it turns on the voltmeter and you can check the, the current voltage. Another popular one is to wire it to the rev switch, so that when you pull the rev trigger, the uh, voltmeter comes on and you can see the actual operating voltage, um, which is also perfectly um, uh, viable. The other option is to just have a, an external switch or a button or something that you push. Uh, you can either have it be a, a permanent switch where you push it and it just stays on, uh, or a momentary switch where as long as you're holding that button down it turns on. All perfectly good options depending on what you wanted. This one in particular, he has to have it uh, linked to the jam door switch since he wanted the locks removed um, that switch wasn't going to be doing anything anymore anyway and so we are going to wire the voltmeter up to that and the wiring is really very simple the black wire goes to negative from the battery uh, which in this case uh, there is negative coming across to the back area because there is both a motor here and uh, it is wired into the switches because there is an electric brake on um, the pusher motor because otherwise the gun won't ever stop firing. You need to have that electric brake in there. Um, so, uh, you can wire the, the negative into either of those. Either the, uh, the negative line that comes across when it goes to the switch, you can wire it into the same spot. As long as it's not on the far side of the switch, it needs to be on the side of the switch that is coming from the battery. You could also connect it to the negative lead on the pusher motor, because that is a direct connection to that motor and that'll again have your uh, negative straight from the battery. The positive needs to be connected to the um, normally open side of a switch somewhere. Uh, whether you use the switch on the jam door or the rev switch or your own switch, wherever it is, it needs to be on the normally open side. Um, so that when the button is pressed and you close the connection, then you get the positive and it will light up your voltmeter. Um, in uh, this case, we're going to be connecting it to the Jamdor switch, which previously had three wires going to it because it did utilize uh, the electric brake. So when you open the Jamdor, it would um, halt, short out, and halt the um, flywheel motors as well you know, to you know, bring it to a complete stop so you didn't have to worry about getting your fingers caught in the flywheels or anything. Uh, but we're not going to be using all three of them. We're only going to be using two of them. We'll get it nice, let's see if we can get it close enough so you can actually see what I'm talking about. Um, we will be using the center one and the farthest one from the switch. Uh, that is the, the center one is the calm and the far one is the normally open. So that's the one that's not being connected when the switch is um, not pressed and it's the one that gets connected when you press it. Uh, which is what we want in this case. The uh, the one that was yellow, the front one, will not have anything connected to it because we're not, we don't need it. So that is really all there is to it. Negative goes to the black, 
and then a normally open positive line needs to go to the red, and that way when your button is pressed, it will activate your voltmeter. And that really is pretty much all there is to it. If you have any uh, more advanced questions, comments, concerns, suggestions, corrections, go ahead and put them in the comment section. I definitely need um, suggestions for future episodes. I am going to be doing integrations, but that's going to be a whole long series um, that I will be doing in conjunction with a complicated integration that I'm doing for myself uh, over the next couple of months, hopefully. Uh, and I will be filming all of the stages of that, and I will use that to do um, Monday Mod Tips on integrations. Uh, a lot of that I'm probably going to be learning as I go, as I haven't actually done a whole lot of complicated integrations. Um, but I will definitely share with you all the things that I learn. If you're really interested in integrations, I recommend going and watching uh, Mod Along with Mr. Nathan, because he does the most beautiful integrations that I've ever seen. You can't even see where the integration happened. They're amazing. Um, and he does a really good job of explaining it, and I will probably end up watching that whole series again when I get ready to start watching mine. So I will probably just be repeating a lot of things that Mr. Nathan says. But for those of you who are interested, you can watch mine as well. So... Comments, questions, concerns, put them in the comment section. I hope this was helpful, and thank you for watching.